Hi, this is Shaman from Ludovox. So today I'm going to tell you about Viking Gone Wild, the board game, which is a game from two to four players for age 14 plus and with a duration from 45 to 90 minutes, depending on how many players you have around the table and if this is your first time or not. So this is a game prototype right now that you can see in that video and nothing is definitive right now. This is going to be on Kickstarter for crowdfunding. So, in Viking Gone Wild, every player will be a war chief that will be leading his Vikings clan and will try to beat his opponents by achieving missions, by attacking the opponent's buildings, and just by winning some majority based on these bonus cards, which are just randomized and you get only four among the many that are available in the game box for each game that you will play. So, this is a bit specific game because this is a mix of deck building and development game. So, you will both have to manage a hand and a deck of cards because most of the things that you're going to do in that game will be card driven. So, everybody will start with the same set of 10 cards, 10 basic cards, and that you're going to improve over the course of the game by acquiring new cards. So, this is deck building uh, part of the game, but you get also a development part. So, basically, there are six buildings that you're going to earn. Uh, during the game that will give you different benefits. So you have some permanent production of resource, you'll be able to draw more cards permanently, to keep cards in your hand between the turns, or to just store the resource that you have earned uh, with your production. And that would be permanent bonuses that you will uh, put uh, alongside with your player's uh, board, and that would not be something going in your discard or deck. Okay, so for example, if I'm just getting that kind of thing, for example, that means that I'm able to draw one more card every turn, thanks to the tavern. I will produce one beer by default at the beginning of every of my turn, thanks to the brewery. And then I have a beer container that will allow me to store up to four different resource cube for beer, which is this brown cube. Okay, so the turn order is quite simple. So you get five cards plus one for each tavern you have. So here, for example, because I have one tavern, I will get one more card. And at the beginning of the game, you get only beer, beer card that will give you one bronze cube resource. You get gold that will get you one yellow cube for gold. And you get some viking warriors, which are just the most basic warrior with only one attack power. So my goal during my player phase is to get the maximum of my hand. That would be just by acquiring the new building I need. So for example here, I, I may think that I need uh, a gold factory. So I would just pay three beer cards that I put in my discard. I would get a beer factory next to my player's board because this is my building area. I will put the token for building, uh, I mean, under construction, which means that is not yet available and that is a permanent building I, I have now. It's not yet active because under construction, but this is permanent and nobody will be able to remove that building from my, from, from my side. Okay, so I could also try to get some new cards that will incorporate into my deck. So basically, there are different areas where I could get cards from. So there is that river of cards called the Odin's Pass, and that is a random set of five cards that would change during the game progressively. I mean, this is a bigger deck of cards, that, are, and I could get many things from that, which means uh, temporary bonus. And me, I will I will attack for just in immediate uh, bonus. I could get some new units. I could get some defense card. Uh, the only thing I could not get is just building. This is everything that you get from here would be inside your deck, and that would be for the deck building part. There are many different strategies you can elaborate from the card you get here. So you can have a drawing uh, drawing strategy, a unit oriented strategy, more aggressive, or just a resource oriented strategy. Here you can get some new unit that will put into your discard as usual when you get a new card. You can get some towers which are defense for when you're attacked. And finally there are the diving, the diving favors that you can get only by reaching some checkpoint that you have on the score track. So basically the first, I mean every player that would just reach these different check marks for the, for the victory points would be able to get one of these two available cards and maybe even the hidden card here on top of the, of the of the deck. So these are very powerful cards, so that is a bit of a race to the, for, for the victory points at the beginning to rush getting one of these cards, because this is quite important for your development. So you can acquire a card, but you can also attack enemies. So basically attacking is just putting a list of units that you would want to assign one building 
at an opponent's uh, side to attack. So for example, I'll say, I just want to attack your brewery. So I will put a number of units. The opponent always has a chance to defend while uh, playing some defense card, tower defense uh, card from his hand that would raise the value of, uh, of the, the armor of the building. So it can be successful or missed attack and people will get some victory point based on that. So uh, defender will get victory point for every unit he counter and uh, attacker will get victory point based on how many building he has damaged his, uh, his turn. So there is a player aid that will give you the information about how many victory points you get for how many building you have damaged uh, that turn. So uh, your goal is to damage the maximum amount of building from your opponent side to get the maximum number of, of victory points. There may be some different strategy as you may just steal some resources from a container, so that could be useful to limit the development possibility of your, your um, opponent. And you can attack the town hall of your opponent, which will, can give you quite some victory points, depending on the level of that building. That, that building could get you even some divine favor if you're attacking the maximum level of uh, the, the town hall level 3 from your opponent. So, one last thing is that this town hall can be upgrading during a player's phase for, and then you will have to pay some gold to get it to the next level. Basically, this town hall is giving you some victory points potentially, but it also limiting the number of buildings you can have at the same time. So the first one will give you the limit of 5 buildings, so level 2 will give you the limit of 8 building, and finally the, the last one, so level 3, will give you uh, unlimited capacity of buildings. So we are playing like this, just improving our deck, just uh, producing, getting some development that would just permanently improve your capacity or uh, during the game, it's until uh, one player would reach 30 or 40 points on score track based on the number of players. So that we call the end of the game, which play we play just one last turn and then we are done. We just look at the score on the score track and then we will add some maturity bonuses. So these bonuses are just uh, drawn um, randomly at the beginning of the game. So I think that there is something like 12 or 15 different ones and you get only four during uh, each game. So basically, for example, defender will give six points to the player with the most uh, chill, let's say defense card. Merchant will give six points to the player with the most resource card, etc. So we do that and that will change a bit the dynamic of the game because for each game you get different cards so that will give some different targets and goals for, for the player for this game. Well, you know almost everything about Viking Gunwise, so now it's your move. Go ahead and play!